Hey everyone, Yiri here and in this video I will show you how you can manage design system tokens inside Supernova. Now what do you see here is a design system that we have previously imported and it contains some colors, some typographies, also some components and some assets. But today specifically we will talk about tokens. Now design tokens are pieces of information, they are unique pieces of information and they can be colors, they can be typography, but they can be even more sophisticated things such as animation definitions. They all belong to, the, to this category of a design system tokens. And in Supernova, you can maintain a library of those tokens and then use them to your advantage. For example, you can add them into the documentation and describe how your branding colors uh, are defined and how they should be used uh, throughout your products. Or you can automate the delivery of the colors of the typographies and some more sophisticated design tokens into uh, your code bases. What you see here uh, on the left side when you start with, uh, with Supernova and when you import your design for the first time is the token tab. Now token tab is where you maintain your design system tokens, when you dis where you describe them and also where you create some new ones. Because in Supernova we have two uh, distinct categories I would say uh, of design system tokens. The tokens that are coming from uh, the design side for example, coming from the Figma styles, and then tokens that you create and actively maintain inside Supernova. Because design system tokens are not just about, uh, you know, design. They are also very useful for developers. So Supernova allows you to maintain a library of tokens that uh, will benefit both the designers and the developers. Now, speaking about what all you can maintain inside Supernova, uh, we can just go very quickly through the categories. So we have colors, we have already seen this, typographies, which basically defines a uh, text style, really. Uh, then also fonts, uh, we can specifically create um, definitions of the fonts that we will be reusing throughout the system. And maybe the fonts are actually being used inside the typographies as well. So you can imagine that you have a one font definition, one font token. And if you want to change all the typographies at once, you'll just switch uh, the value of that token and all the typographies will change. Now we also have some additional uh, design values such as gradients, shadows, blurs, borders, radii and so on. But we also have uh, very specific uh, tokens mostly used for, uh, useful for the definition for the developers. So for example we have measures you can define you know a width of some element. For example you would create a width and height uh, of some icon and you could define as a it as a measure, uh, as sort of constant that everyone can use uh, inside your company. We also have a category called strings, uh, which is basically a uh, localization definition. So if you want to maintain a library of the text pieces that you are using throughout the system, you can do this in Supernova as well. And then finally, we have category called other. If there is something that you would like to define that we don't support by default, you can just create other token, which is basically any kind of textual information uh, that you want to do. So pieces of CSS, uh, JSON definitions, maybe some animation definitions and so on, they would all belong to other. Now, of course, the main categories are also further subdivided into groups. So you can always order your tokens uh, and reorder, shuffle them around uh, based on your preferences. And we will show you, I will show you how exactly to do that. Now, there are two categories, as I mentioned, of the tokens. Ones that are coming from the design tool and uh, those are what you see here. They always have this uh, icon that uh, basically show you uh, from which design file uh, they originated and those uh, tokens cannot be edited. You always edit them uh, inside the design tool itself. So if I would like to change this green color, maybe tweak it slightly, I would go to my Figma file, I would tweak the value and then the Figma connection that we are maintaining would update those tokens. 
of course, uh, it's probably not enough, right, to uh, have just the design tokens. Really, the design system is about developers and designers together. So we would like to create some of the tokens that maybe Figma doesn't support, or maybe there are more developer oriented as well. And I will show you now how exactly you can do this. So when I was thinking how we can do this, um, I was thinking, let's create some other token that is maybe not possible to define natively inside Figma. Uh, and that would be the border. For some reason, you cannot define borders in Figma. I guess it's just a matter of time, but you can certainly do this inside Supernova. And we will not only create the borders as raw values, but we will also create them as references to other tokens. So then when the values of the tokens change, uh, our borders will change as well. So let's start to create one of the borders. Um, I will just click on this, uh, on this button uh, and it will bring a new dialogue that basically asks me for all the basic information about the new token, new border token this time that I'm creating. I'll provide a name, so let's just call it border. Actually, maybe let's call it error border. Um, and as a des description, I will just say uh, for everyone who is interested, this border should be used everywhere uh, where we want to highlight some error. Now, uh, we have the metadata about the token filled in, but we need to still uh, say what the value of the token is. Specifically for the border, uh, we can define three values, uh, its color, uh, its width, and also whether we want inside, outside, or center border token. Um, we also have something that uh, is called custom properties, but there is a dedicated video uh, just for this purpose. Uh, what I will say just now is that you can extend the default data model of the supernova with your own custom properties. So each token can actually contain much more information than just the plain value, which is set uh, there from the beginning. Now, continuing creation of this border token, I need to select what color uh, I want to use for this border. So I have two options. The first one is that I would just provide a plain value. So, you know, maybe I could uh, select some red one. Um, but this is not really preferred choice in my opinion, because I've already defined this color. So what I would like to use instead is sort of a reference to already existing error color that I have defined inside my design system. And to do this, I'll just simply click this link icon, which will bring a library of tokens that are appropriate to be used within this context. So here for, for this specific case, it will bring up all my colors and I can just select the one uh, that feels like it should be content of this border. So what I will do, I will just filter and I will show the error. You can see that I have four uh, errors defined. I like this one. So let's use it. And then you can see I've actually already defined the color that should belong to the border, specifically to the error. So now I'm creating a border token that depends on this color. If, and if I would change this inside the supernova, should it be supernova defined token, or inside Figma, this border token would also change. So the color change will actually propagate to the border as well. This leads to a clean design system that actually automates um, the maintenance uh, of itself. And you can set those dependency chains on all the tokens throughout the entire supernova. Now, second part, of course, we are being asked for the width. So let's just uh, leave this for now, maybe uh, add like a two pixel width uh, and confirm the creation of this token. Now we have a border token, error border token, and we could use it. Uh, maybe if I'm a developer, I would use this uh, in my project. So all the borders of the error type are the same. But what is also really cool is that you can intermix the tokens together. So what I would like to do is to go back to this border token and in this bit, I would like to reference in another category of the token. This type may be a measure, which would actually define uh, a size for the borders or width for the borders uh, throughout the entire design system. So 
what I will do, I will just close this, go to measures this time and create my first measure. Uh, I will name this a border width, or actually I will just maybe uh, call it thickness. Um, let's leave the description for now. And I want all my borders to be five pixel uh, in thickness. I'll confirm this token. And now we have a first measure token uh, defined inside the design system. But this measure token is on a global level. It's It doesn't belong to any category. And I, I like my, my tokens to be ordered. So what I will do, I will right click this token and I will move it to a new group that I will create. And we will call this maybe borders or constants or just whatever, uh, whatever you feel is appropriate. So I will create a new group. And now you can see that we have a measure tokens uh, with a subcategory called constants. And in this, we have just a generic thickness of five units, uh, specifically in this case of five pixels. And of course, you can hide it, show it. You can create unlimited number of those as well. So for uh, really sophisticated design systems, this, uh, this feature can actually uh, be extremely useful. But now I would like to use this constant that I have created inside Figma back in my border tokens. So then I can sh use this thickness and change it uh, for all the border tokens at once. So I will move back to the borders and I will start creating a new border just so we know that uh, this, this change will actually do something. Um, so I will create a success border maybe this time the description uh, you can fill yourself uh, and maybe I will use the blue 800 um, or actually for the success maybe a green one so I would use the green one and this time I would also link the measure that I was that I now created inside the design system uh, and here you, you can see that I have only one measure only the thickness so it's very easy I will just select this one and now we have created a border token that references a color from Figma. So if this color changes in Figma, this border token will change as well. And it actually also references a thickness constant uh, from Supernova. So if we change this inside Supernova, this border token will change as well. So this is sort of hybrid token that uses a lot of information from our design system, but is always consistent because it uses um, already existing elements. I will confirm the creation of the token. Now you can see that we have a green token uh, that has a five pixel of thickness and it's using a color coming from Figma. I would also like to change this, uh, this border so it uses the same thickness. So just going back to it, I can just relink my original value to a new thickness. And if we update this token, you will see that indeed they both share the same size. And of course, because they are now both dynamically linked together through the measure, I can just go to the thickness. And because this is a like a global configuration now or, or a token that provides value to other tokens, I can just change this. And if I would make it a double, for example, uh, this border would immediately change. And you can see that those borders are now very thick indeed. So this is what you can do with tokens uh, inside Supernova. There is actually quite a bit more. You can use them inside your documentation. You can use them to distribute their values uh, into your code bases and so on. But there are dedicated videos for that. For now, I thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.